So my name is Oshin Quinn. This is my second ACL injury and, and kind of let players know what's in store for them, some tips and um, maybe how to get back to, to playing to where they were before. All right, Oshin, let's go back to the start. So how did the injury happen? So I was playing a league game and we were in the second half. I was going pretty well in the game too and went to go on for a tackle like I would any other time in the game. It's pretty innocuous and went in near hand tackle and just like the knee just buckled from under me. Wasn't any real mad pain, um, but the knee just completely left me. I kind of knew straight away that I had done damage to the knee and I uh, went off straight away after it. Right, so it wasn't any immediate pain, but how did you feel the first few days after that? I think because I had done the other ACL, I knew that it was probably more than likely an ACL injury. So the, the couple of days after was pretty depressing because you, you probably knew what was coming in store and you knew you were going to be out for another season, which is shit when it's happened to you before. And how did you find it? It was definitely the ACL. So the whole process is you got to go to your physio, the physio will check you out and then the physio will recommend you for an MRI. I got recommended to go for an MRI and then uh, a couple of days later then you go up to your physio and you find out um, what it is and mine was a full rupture of the ACL. So got a um, report back today, done my ACL in the right knee um, last Friday. Which is a different knee than the knee before I done my ACL on. Um, it's really fucking shite. Um, it's really heartbreaking. Um, if you've been through an injury like this before, it's really bad and it's more bad mentally. Like physically, it actually wasn't sore when it happened. It's not really sore. And I actually was starting to think it wasn't too bad and then I got the report back and it changed my mind. Mentally, it's really hard when you've been through it before um, and you know how much you miss, it's tough. Like when you when you identify yourself so much with football and you play football all your whole life, no matter what level you are, you identify yourself as that. And um, like it's taken away from me and you know you're missing it for a year. It's fucking really hard. Um, it's really hard thinking about the thought that you don't have that. You don't know what you're meant to be without that. Um, and that's, that's really the kind of hard part of it. Um, I was hesitant to probably put this up because I was thinking people would be thinking I'm a shite s &C coach because I keep getting injured and then I'm sure there'll be people that probably enjoy the fact that you get hurt and probably be enough people tell me to hang in my boots as well at this stage. Um, but I, can't, I do know that just from hurting the last one, this will help, like the whole process of me going through this is going to help probably at least one person that's going through it as well. Um, and there'll be insights I can give and hopefully sharing this lets people know that it's okay to fucking feel heartbroken about this. It's okay to cry about it. Um, and it could be worse. You know, when you put in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that bad at all. It could be much worse. Um, but yeah. But it's tough because you know what's in store and you know what you have to go through the surgery, you know the length of time you're going to be out. And um, yeah, the first few days are definitely definitely most challenging of probably nearly the entire process. Mm. Where does your head go after that? I think it's kind of like, you sort of go into two spaces, so you're, you're obviously, you're down about the fact that you're injured, but then you kind of have to switch on to the mode of going, right, I need to start to put the work in to get ready for surgery, I need to start to contact people to try and get, you know, people to yell out to help me with my rehab and with the recovery. So you kind of have to very quickly switch into the mode of going to work with it. Um, you can't sit and be depressed about it, but you've really only got a few days. If you spend too long there, you're probably going to um, set yourself back even further. Right. What specifically did you work on pre-surgery? So the big thing pre-surgery is providing that you're able to get the movement in your knee back so you can straighten it fully and you can bend it back, is trying to get as much size and strength into the leg as possible. Because once you go through the surgery, your leg is going to start, the muscle in your leg is going to start to atrophy, so it means it's going to die off. So you want to try and build as much of that as possible so that there's going to be more retained after surgery. So my workouts were really like bodybuilding, strength building uh, workouts for the quads and hamstrings. It was pretty repetitive, but um, it really set me up well. I just nailed it probably every other day um, until surgery. And what was the actual surgery like? Yeah, so the surgery is, it's a really simple process. You go up, you get booked in, they put you to sleep and you wake up and uh, it's done, but 
it, it's a, it's really painful. Like you, for the first day after, you cannot move your leg, and any movement of the leg is really horrible. I got the patella graft, so any kind of movement and around the knee was just it's horrible. So the the first couple of days after your surgery, it is really sore, and your kind of key things in is you're trying to get your swelling down, you're trying to manage your pain, and you're trying to just rest up as much as possible, which is um. Yeah, it's tough. It's a really, really hard part of the process. And what was the, the next few weeks like? I think besides actually the injury happening, it's, you know, the surgery and the first few weeks after it is probably the hardest because you realize how far away you are from where you want to get back to because, you know, your, your goal at that stage is to be able to like lift your heel off the ground. It's being able to walk again. It's such basic things. And um, it's such a struggle and it reminds you how far away from where you are. And I think that's mentally probably the hardest part because you know that there's so long to go and there's so many monotonous tasks you have to do to get back there. So I am back home now from ACL surgery. Um, got the surgery yesterday, everything went well. Um, yeah, didn't have much pain, no complications with the surgery. So perfect in that respect. I wasn't too sore yesterday, kind of been a wee bit sore today, um, but back home here now, we've got one of these game ready devices on my leg. And I'm just chilling out in bed here. And um, yeah, kind of the realizations are starting to hit you now that um, you got a long road ahead. That's how sore the knee feels right now, how swollen it is, but um, you just got to take it day by day. So, chilling out now, icing, compressing, gonna get a go with some exercises now soon. And um, yeah, gonna watch a lot of films over the next three or four days here. Specifically, what's the main things you work on then post surgery? So in the first few weeks after, it's getting your swelling down, so you want to try and get the knee, physios would say, getting the knee as quiet as possible, so the swelling and the pain down. Once you're kind of getting that, then you're looking at getting your extension, your flexion, so getting full range of motion in the knee, and like that's really basic exercises that the physio or surgeon will give you. But if you don't do that in the first couple of weeks, it can really derail your rehab going forward. So for them first few weeks, that's massive, and that's where all your energy kind of goes. Once you get through that, you're kind of going into your sort of normal rehab of strengthening the leg again and getting your movement back in it with sort of more sport specific type movements. And, and how do you go from that to sprinting? So you get your movement back and then you start to build the quad up. Because like I said earlier, you're going to have like the muscle dying off a lot. So you have to build that back up. Once you get that built up and you can start to move properly and kind of evenly on both sides, so you've got a good degree of strength back. Then you're starting with like basic walking and marching drills, you know, movements against the walls where you're just practicing running, nearly without running. Um, and then doing lots of single leg strength exercises. Then once you do that, you're kind of in a position where you can start to do jumping exercises. When you can start to do jumping exercises, then you're in a position where you can start running. Once you kind of get to the point of running, that's you, that's you really at the point where you kind of feel somewhat normal again. Right. Now you've suffered an ACL injury before. Have you done anything different this time around in rehab? So probably the big thing this time around is um, I've had a lot more focus on doing like single leg exercises, so strengthening the right leg and not doing a lot of double leg, like classical strength exercises like squats and deadlifts. I haven't really done any back squatting or deadlifting at all in my rehab, which in the last one, I'd done a massive amount of it and thought it was probably helping me, but in hindsight, it probably was strengthening the other leg. Um, the other big thing is I've been focusing a lot on, on movement, so trying to get back into sports specific movements and trying to do them a lot earlier in this rehab. So. Uh, it's probably been a wee bit more aggressive in a sense than doing things that people will typically do a lot further down the rehab. I'm doing them a lot earlier, but I'm kind of trying to do that in a safe way as well. Um, but it's definitely, it feels like it's paid dividends because I feel like I'm a lot further ahead than what I was in the last ACL injury. And how much time would you put onto this? You kind of need to be doing something probably every day or every other day. So in those first few weeks after surgery, you do have to be doing something on the leg every day. And it can be, that could be 30 minutes, and then it kind of extends out to maybe an hour. Um, at the minute, my training routine is I usually do two days on, one day off, and just repeat that. And most of those sessions can be anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on what you're doing. You know, once you get back out onto the pitch, it probably adds a bit more time into it. So it actually is quite a time consuming process, and you do probably have to have a lot of time to be able to do your rehab well and get back in a quick enough time frame. Okay, and what's the next stage for you? So now we're back sprinting and we started back in the change of direction work. 
So like the change of direction is really the hard part. Sprinting and running is kind of relatively easy, but it's uh, getting confident pushing off that leg that you've had uh, the surgery on. So now it's build up the confidence in that, build up the strength specifically for that. Um, like some of the exercise you will have seen in this documentary here. And then want to try and implement more game based stuff. So actually doing stuff against opponents, doing tackling, doing reactive drills. So you kind of go from like basic running, change of direction, and the more sort of uh, reactive change of direction and then doing it with players and against players so that you're creating more game-like scenarios. And once you can do that and you get away with no pain, then you're sort of trying to get back into your, your full training sessions with the team. And have you got any advice for anybody about to go through what you've just went through? Uh, I think with uh, the surgery and the rehab, the big thing is I think you can, you can get lost in the time frame because you know it's nine months or 12 months. You can, you can almost nearly put yourself off from doing the work in it because you think this is going to take so long to get back. If I miss a day or I miss a week, it's not really a big deal. For me, the big thing that's helped is you sort of just keep yourself in going one week at a time and give yourself many goals each week. You give yourself a mini goal this week of you're trying to straighten your leg and then the next week you add on to you're trying to do a squat and eventually when the weeks go by you build up a massive amount of work but with people I've worked in uh, rehabbing them and, and people I've talked to about the challenge is you know if people get lost and thinking it's nine months, 12 months and it puts them off from doing the work or it gets them down that can be the killer so I think take one week at a time and focus on many goals each week and you do that very quickly you find yourself actually in a position where you, you feel pretty normal again. Okay Oshin thanks for that.